this is my third year volunteering for the marathon. I do it every year, and um, I'm part of the medical sweep team, mm -hmm. which is like the big triage team that when the um, when the runners cross the finish line um, and, and they need help or, or if they're not doing so well, we, we grab them and we bring them into the medical tents. Um, so we were we were working, we were triaging athletes all day long, and um, and they were coming in here, you know, the, the typical injuries, running injuries, uh, hypothermia, and, and just everything. And um, and we heard this big boom, and I looked up and I said, "Are you kidding me? It's thundering! Like what a horrible day to thunder!" And I and I, so I ran outside real quick, and I looked up at the sky. But it was clear, and it wasn't thundering. That was my initial response: was that it's thundering. Mm -hmm. And so I said, "All right, forget it." I went back inside, heard another one, and I was like, "Well, you know, what? it's probably just the construction because there's a lot of construction in Boston, and that's kind of like what it sounded like." Mm -hmm. um, and then I heard the sirens, and I heard a lot of sirens, and so I, I I ran out of the tent real quick, and I asked a police officer. I said, "What was what's going on?" And he uh, was very short, and he just said. It was an explosion. We don't know anything else. Um, I, I don't know. You know, he, he, he didn't know. He didn't know. It, you know, because it was within seconds of the second explosion. And, um, and so I said, okay. So I ran to the first medical tent. And because I, I wanted to see what, I wanted to see what's happening. I, I was curious, you know, too. But I also, you know, you want to see if you can be useful. There's, I mean, there's thousands of medical volunteers there. Um, and I ran to the first medical tent, and I saw people being loaded on to the Boston EMS ambulances. You know, from what I saw, it looked. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if they were going. You know, two patients per ambulance. There, there's a possibility, um, but it just. It was very chaotic. Um, but EMS was, you know, doing their best to to swiftly move people out. Mm -hmm. um, so I went inside, and. It wasn't runners. It wasn't runners that were hurt. It was bystanders. And because I saw somebody uh, being lifted into the ambulance, and I, I thought to myself, he looks really young to be a runner, to have just completed a marathon. And, and then I realized, like, it wasn't, it wasn't um, runners. And, uh, and it, so they're, in on, they're on these cots. There are patients on the cots everywhere. And it, it you know, I, I don't want to... A lesser version of a war zone, you know. I, I don't know. Um, and there were these injuries, and, and I've been an EMT for almost four years, and, but I've never been involved in a in a mass in, mass incident triage or mass casualty triage. And so this was kind of a first for me. And um, and you and I was just filled with disbelief because you see these injuries and you don't you don't see them, you know, very often. Or for me, I haven't seen them. You know, I, it's only been you know almost four years, and that's not a lot compared to everybody else that's doing it. You know, I'm I'm the lowest on the totem pole, and um, and and they were there was a lot of like extremity injuries, um, and a lot of people had their had their legs splinted, as I'm sure you saw, and they had tourniquets on their legs trying to restrict the blood flow um, because a lot of people were becoming septic and, and they were going uh, they were losing a lot of blood. And um, and the legs were elevated, and they were wrapped up in these shock garments. And um, and then I saw this one girl, and she was lying on the cot. And, and they were they were doing a really good job triaging because essentially in a mass casualty triage, you stabilize them, you wrap them up, you get you get them stable, and you move on to the next patient. And so there was this one girl, and she she had already been stabilized. Her leg was wrapped up, and they had moved on it. But she. She didn't really look right. She uh, she was staring, and, uh, but she had like this little gloss in her eyes, you know. And you can stop me if this is not what you want to hear. Um, and she was young, and she looked really scared. So I went over to her and I started talking to her, and and we talked for a little bit, you know, try to keep her talking. Um, and then a physician came over, and you know, I told her, you know, I saw the injury on her leg. I said, this is what we got, and. Um, um, I said, you know, check the IV, make sure everything's, make sure the IV looks good. And, and then all of a sudden, just people started flocking all over her, uh, more physicians. And, you know, 
as sad as it is, it's the best place to be because you've got hundreds of physicians and hundreds of people at the top of their specialties that know so much more than I do. You know, if I feel like that's why the casualty rate was so low, you know, because we had all these physicians and we had all these people helping. Um, and and so as this was happening, this girl, she just started, she started declining, essentially. Her mental status started declining and she she was dozing off a little bit and, I, and I'm rubbing her chest and I'm saying, hey, you know, what's your name? Where are you from? You know, wh where are your parents? Um, and and she's, she's just in and out, you know, she's in and out. And so finally, um, we were waiting for an ambulance. We were waiting to transport her. And we moved her and we moved her over and we, we tried to establish another IV because the first one, she was just, she was taking a lot of fluid in, you know, she needed that she, because she, she was declining. And, um, uh, and then we finally, we got her on the ambulance and, and we, we had to cut off her clothes because that's what they wanted us to do. You know, um, in a mass casualty situation, you want to get them as prepared as they possibly can be for when they get into the hospital to reduce some of the mm -hmm. hospital overflow. And, and she, she was just so upset and, you know, like, um, it's hard. As much as she wasn't alert, she, she, was, she was in a lot of pain, sporadic pain, and, and she would yell a lot. And, and it was heartbreaking, it was heartbreaking. Right after the explosion, the cell towers, you know, lost, lost signal or something, nobody had service, nobody had cell phone service. Most, everybody's phones were dying. Um, and you couldn't, you couldn't make phone calls. Some people were lucky enough they had texting services, but uh, my phone didn't work. You know, people were texting me, but I can't text them back and tell them I'm okay. I was able to get through to my dad right after it happened and said, Dad, turn on the news. I think something just happened. Mm -hmm. um, and after I realized what had happened, I, he had texted me and said, you know, this is what had happened. But after that, there was nothing. Um, and then, you know, an hour or so after, you know, we're still transitioning, we're still uh, recovering, and the police are blocking the entire, you know, most of the city. We're redirecting runners. We're saying, don't go down this street, you know, stay, keep going straight, which causes a huge problem for the runners because they couldn't, they couldn't see their families. They couldn't get to their families. They couldn't get their bags that they packed, that they were supposed to get after the, uh, the race, and, and they, there weren't, there wasn't access to those bags. So a lot of the runners were just, you're still in their clothes, you know, and it had no access to any of their clothes to change into, and that caused a huge problem as well. Um, and, and the police blocked off the streets, um, a lot of the streets, and essentially, you know, after a while they said, get out of the city, just get out, go home, stay in your house. Um, you know, we're, we're evacuating such part of the city get out so I um, I'm, I'm trying to think how am I gonna get out of the city and I had my medical gear on and I had my vest on um, but that didn't give me any <laughs> any special treatment um, so I ended up walking I walked from the Commons past Fenway to my sister who lives at Simmons College and I walked to Simmons and I stayed with her and, and then I eventually around 8 o'clock uh, took the green line home